one night on the way home from oh, school. Could, could you tell me your name, please? Uh, <laughs> Dana Wright it was then. I'm Dana Johnston now. And which school was This that? is the Luton High School. Um, what years were you, roughly was that you were here? Uh, 1942. Right. To 48. <laughs> anyway, we were on the way home from school and we thought we'd like to investigate the static water tank. So we took off our shoes and socks and, and paddled in up to the thighs yeah. and we're messing about and of course we got caught. So we put our heads together to decide what, what was the best thing to do. And we actually got a whole load of wriggly things out of the water, took them home, put them in jars and labelled them, put them on the window sills in the corridor the next day. Yeah. By the time we were hauled over the coals, these were all out there, neatly labelled. <laughs> and we were able to say, we we're actually botanising and geology using. Well, that and we almost, almost got away with it. <laughs> so, so what, what's I'm, your name? I'm Beryl Curry. Yeah. And that's your sister? That's my sister. Yes. So I'm Mavis. So we're yeah. in the here. And um, which and school? I was here, I was here, 19... 
or both? Well, I was born Daphne Shaby, and uh, my married name is Barbara. And I actually came. School. I was at. I, I passed my 11 plus in 1949, but I actually came from the countryside. I'm. I'm. I was born. Um, from, uh, my, my, my father was a farmer. I was born at Bullock's Hill, and all my relatives were from the country. Um, and then I was married in 1960, having worked at George Kent's in the drawing office. And we've had um, three children, two boys with a daughter in the middle, and the two boys um, uh, were educated under the comprehensive system at Leland's, Sunderland Park. They both went to university, one to York to study maths, physics and chemistry and the other one did um, went to Sheffield University and did social geography. And do you have any memories of school? Yes, here. Yeah, here. Well, having come from a very small village school, um, I, was, I was very, very nervous. Um, I was the... Um, there was one other girl in the village who was in the fifth form, the very big and I was starting at 11, and I, otherwise I knew nobody, and I was very, very nervous. And on the first day, I went to catch the village bus, there was only one, went to catch the village bus at the bottom of Alexandra Avenue, and it was full up with town people just getting off along Fountains Road on there, full up, and it went zooming past me, and I was petrified because I'd never been to Luton on my own. That was my first day to come to school. I'd never been to Luton on my own. Okay. Anyway, I caught a Bedford bus. I knew I could get a Bedford bus, um, right. and I then um, had to walk from Barton up to Bullock's Hill, and my mum was as equally as worried and petrified as me because she wondered where I was, because I was about nearly two hours late home. That was my first day. <laughs> so, what was the name? Well, I was Mary Childs. Janet Stepping and Gerald Chapel. And, and uh, we all arrived here in 1958. The class of 58. That's the class of 58. And Mary and I stayed right through to 
No, no, it's very interesting. It's a very interesting tale some of the ladies have to tell us. Oh, not half. God, yes. I've got the, uh, have I've you got, got, got some respect. good tales? I've got the perspectives. <laughs> Which Girls are allowed to wear white socks in the summer in the lower school, in both houses. Must be three quarter length. morning of course which I didn't go to. <laughs> Just oh right. right. Which school did you go to? <laughs> oh right. So we'll all be there this afternoon from 12 o'clock onwards. Yeah. We're going to go in five minutes. Yeah. So we've got to meet somebody there to take the books in. <laughs> Right, and 
What year, what school was that? It was at the Luton Technical School, 54 to 56. And um, do you have any memories of the school? Oh, wonderful memories. It was, a, it was an education. It wasn't teaching you to pass exams. It encouraged us so much to learn for ourselves. It really stood me in good stead for the rest of my life. Oh, that's good. You, can you remember any of the teachers? Oh, absolutely. My form master was Mr. Jenkins and later Mr. Wainwright. And uh, Mr. Hopkins taught us bookkeeping. Uh, Mrs. Clark taught us maths. Uh, Mrs. Winters taught us French. Uh, who else was? Oh, loads of them. Really wonderful. Did you get up to any pranks or anything like that? Yeah, but we'd better not talk about that. <laughs> oh, alright. One of the things I remember was when Luton Town Football Club was playing Arsenal in the Cup, and it was a replay at Kenilworth Road, and um, it was during a school afternoon. What used to happen, we had a register, because we moved around from site to site, the register would be taken at lunch time, and then it wasn't taken the rest of the time. And Dr Charles was said, now there's nobody to go to this match, you're not bunking off school. And four lads from our form did. And what they didn't realise was that particular afternoon, he knew what was going to happen, so he had the register taken at every single lesson on every single site. And unfortunately, the lads got caught. But it was the only time when most of us got caught doing naughty things. <laughs> Very good. Thanks. Anybody that's going to see my aunt this evening stay behind <laughs> after assembly because we always used to call him Charlie, you see, not to his face, of course. <laughs> right. That was wonderful. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so small, you can't believe. Really. So, what are your names? Oh, what? I. Now I look closely. I can see. see. You were uh, obviously. Much, much younger and much slimmer at the time. You taught us weather. That's right, geography. You started off with weather, that's right. All these clouds all the Yeah, I mean, those days. Uh, we, you never taught us anything about the world. Oh, I see. I'm sorry about that. We, we, I mean, I, I we, we went there. We, had, we never learned any history, only industrial history. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was all John Walton used, used to have a drink. English don't spend yeah. about Ben Bowie. Because he came from Quebec, didn't he? He did. Travel down every day. He was a Welshman. Yeah, but he used to keep, keep an eye on the lads who travel on the train down to Bedford every day. Well, they used, they used to come by the bottom of my garden in the day when the train, there was a special train that was full of slow one. There was all the satchels hung on the handles outside the <laughs> carriages uh, as they went. <laughs> all the best looking girls came up to the beach. They lived in all the villages. Well, well, half the school was the rest of the county. So which school did you go to? Wilson Technical School. And you are? Ian Jackson. Which years were you there? there from 54 to 57. And do you have any memories about the school, or the headmaster, or anything? The headmaster, I know, was a very tall man with glasses, who was very stern, who said, you must work when you work, and play when you play. That's what I remember. And I remember Pop Wally, who was my woodwork teacher, and he's, he obviously was very young at the time, because he still looks very young, but uh, he really got, really got on with him. And, uh, improve my do-it-yourself skills for the years to come. Okay. Well, I've just seen Pop Wally and he's over there and I'm just going over to talk to him. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And
Well, he's standing out there in the car. We've got his buggy. Now he's found yeah, something he's else. He's coming down here. He's coming down here. He was else. walking down with us, but he gave us a. He nicked, nicked away and saw David Ellingham. So. Oh, right. Oh, he's with him now. He's with him now. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, gosh. I thought so. Is that nice to see so you? Yeah. Nice to see you. I did. Well, what was yeah, going on there? Well, just a coffee morning. Tell me, it was a coffee morning. Just a Yes, our time's limited today. Judith, well, as usual. Oh, Judith, oh, I thought when you said Susan, of course I knew Judith, but yeah. yes, I mean, I mean, we yeah, yeah, next door to together, Pauline Stafford, that's Susan. the one, oh, yes, and your you her younger you sister, yes, you know, I can't well, 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 had an old box on, you took me saw her name. Not an old box, it was a new box on then, but I mean, it's an old box. No, no, no. Well, we're not likely to argue really, are we? 40 years or whatever it is. So, what's your name? Norman Barnes. And which school are you in? Loon Technical Junior Tech. And which year was that, roughly? April 44 to December 1946. And have you met any people from there since? Or? No, the only person I know here is someone I only met recently. Uh, he's a, a cyclist like me, and oh. he happens, we meet regularly at a cafe in, or a garden centre in Cod near Codica. Usually get about 40 or 50 cyclists there on a Tuesday and Thursday. And he's the only, he's the only, he was at the college two years after me, so... So I what, didn't know it was school. what do you remember about the college, the technical college? <laughs> Mainly the well, the fact that you had two doors to get in, met at boys' ends and the girls' ends, which we weren't allowed to use. We had to use the one around the side, opposite Waller Street, the old big gates. And we spent most of the time walking between the various rooms in the building, the old basement, which had an imposing entrance but nothing else, because <laughs> they started building and stopped. Presumably it went to war. And then we used to go out onto Waller Street, Guildford Street, all around there, and walk up to Pope's Meadow and Bell's Close for Pope's Bell's Was Close. there another branch of the college there? No, it's just, it just for sports. We went, sports and we played football yeah. at Pope's Meadow, which is the other side of Wardown Park from here. Yeah. And the Bell's Close, which is up High Town, where we played cricket. That's great. We Thanks. spend most of the time walking <laughs> from one to the other. Right. We spend nearly all our day. Yeah. What's this to you? Yeah. <laughs> I've slipped them in. Sorry. Oh, you did ask me. your name? Ken Hester. And which school and year were you at? Luton Grammar School, September 47 until December 52. Right. And do you have any particular memories of the school? What, what's the main things you remember about it? I can remember I wore long trousers when I entered the second year but not in the first year. I can remember Thorpe was my first form master. Mm. I can remember being scared to death, Mr Godfrey. <laughs> he was a headmaster, wasn't he? He was the second master. 
I was a very ordinary pupil. I was in the B stream, coming somewhere in the middle of the form as regards end of year exam results. I was form cricket captain, I remember that. I don't know what else. Uh, and then, was the sixth form here then, or was it not? Oh yes, we had sixth the sixth form. form. Did you go on to sixth form? No, I didn't. I took six O-levels at the end of my five years, failed three of them, stayed on another term to resit the three I failed at the Christmas, passed the three I had previously failed, and then left at the Christmas. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Okay, so what, what, what is your name then? My name was Anne Rymel, and it's now Anne Cruttenden. And uh, which school and year was that? Luton High School, 1950 to 55. And um, where was the high school then? Is that... Which school is that? The high school in Alexander Avenue. Right. And um, were there any, any mem particular memories of... Well, I just then. enjoyed going to school and, um, you know, we had good teachers. I don't think pupils now enjoy school as much as we did in those days. Right. Is that probably because it was a smaller school or...? Well, it could have been. Mm. Could have been, yes. What teachers were there? Can you remember them? Miss Ling, Miss Dorling, Miss Brumer, Miss Fuller. Mm. Which which ones taught you what? Do you know? Can you remember? Miss Brumer taught us French. Um, then we had a lady over from America called Miss Oliver. And um, she taught us geography. <laughs>
I have this overwhelming urge to tell you to stop slouching, sit up straight, <laughs> and actually to come out with a sort of crass comment like, well, I've got all afternoon. <laughs> I apologise for that. You give me a stage, a school hall, and I quickly revert to type. But anyway, on behalf of the organisers and on behalf of the principal and governors of the Sixth Form College, may I extend to you a very warm welcome to the centenary celebration. The purpose of today's assembly is to rehearse and to record the various milestones in the history of a particular school which made a significant contribution to Luton secondary education. It's also a time to recapture memories and features of school life. And of course, as is the nature of any reunion, uh, we're here because of fellowship, and that is a very important aspect of it all. I'd like to introduce our guests to you. We are pleased and honoured to welcome their worships, the Mayors of Luton and Dunstable, Councillor Doris Hinckley and Councillor Jenny Fairburn, and the Deputy Mayor of Dunstable also. And may I say to the Mayor of Dunstable that she has actually stepped into the enemy camp. <laughs> albeit today under the flag of truce. There was also always a great rivalry between the Luton and Dunstable Grammar Schools, although I have to say mostly on the playing field. I believe there is still an annual rugby match which serves to keep that hostility alive and well. <laughs> we also have Kelvin Hopkins, who is the uh, Member of Parliament for Luton North. We have Rebecca Nelson of the Department of Lifelong Learning. Uh, welcome to Councillor Brian Piggott, Vice Chairman of Bedfordshire County Council, and of course Simon Kitchener, the Principal of the College, who is supported by some of his governors. On the platform here, we have Janet Richardson and we have David Webb, and I am reliably informed that they used to sit next to one another at Denby High. <laughs> now, my name is Melvin Butcher, and my role is to smile benignly encouragingly, but also to keep order. <laughs> and make no mistake, that latter point is imperative, because however old you think you are, you are still back at school. <laughs> however temporarily, and I will not tolerate regressive behaviour. <laughs> well, hopefully I shall equip myself to your satisfaction, but I must tell you that I addressed a very large meeting recently in a hall such as this, and there was some, I was about 10 minutes into my address, and there was some disturbance up in the balcony. And I called out, can you hear me up at the back there? And a voice came back, yes, thank you, but I'd gladly change places with someone who can't. <laughs> Be warned. Well, John and Patricia Gillespie, very hospitable people, took me to their home and uh, laid down the rules and regulations of this afternoon and explained my duties and the running order. And John said, quite emphatically in my view, that this afternoon's event is strictly timed to run for one hour, four minutes and 25 seconds. <laughs> now such impressive precision makes the likes of Euclid seem hopelessly amateur. Now in keeping with John's caveat, I would ask all of the contributors to keep to their allotted time periods. I'm reminded of the minister who was asked to address a major conference at short notice. The time slot was just 10 minutes, and the minister's aide was given the job of writing the speech on the strict understanding that it was 10 minutes only, no more than that. When the conference arrived, they attended, the minister got on the platform, came off livid, and said to the aide, I told you to write me a speech for 10 minutes. Now, the chairman of the conference is upset with me because the whole timing is thrown out of kilter. I spoke for 20 minutes. And the aide said, with due respect, Secretary of State, you did read both copies. <laughs> As chairman, it behoves me to set the standard. Of course it does. John Gillespie gave me 30 seconds for my introductory <laughs> remarks. <laughs> and those of you who have a clear understanding of timing will know that I've only taken up 15 seconds so far. <laughs> I hope all contributors will be persuaded by my example. Now, I have calculated that if we fall behind schedule, 
we can make up valuable seconds by singing the hymns a little faster. <laughs> now, on that note, we will begin with a hymn that was sung in this very hall on the 19th of September 1954 in commemorating, commemorating the 50th anniversary of Newton Secondary School. So let us all stand and sing, Our Father by Whose Servants. one penny rate 
to be raised each year by the Luton Town Council. The school in Luton was to be a mixed one. And this was not an ideological decision, but one of convenience. It was always <coughs> intended to have separate schools as soon as circumstances warranted them. But the project was delayed by the First World War, after which a separate school for girls was provided. The official prospectus claimed that the education to be offered was for both professional and commercial life and would prepare the way for a university and higher technical education and also for prospective teachers. So seed was sown and the school's first buildings were old commercial premises. They were in fact old hat factories and they had uh, been adapted somewhat rudimentarily for our purposes. Now let us remember the pioneering staff and pupils. Life at Park Square. From the opening morning, when groups of excited girls and boys assembled on Park Square and discussed the possibility of the new life on which they were about to enter, to the end of the school year, when those same scholars listened with excitement, mingled with awe, to the reading of the form list, our first year at the school was one long round of novelty and pleasure. Firstly, we had the delight of criticising the mistresses and masters. And it is only fair to add that our criticism, though quite impartial and candid, as all schoolgirl and schoolboy criticism is, was decidedly favourable. The same cannot be said of the school building, I fear. It was, I think, surprisingly well adapted, bearing in mind the original function of the place. There were four or five classrooms, a good chemistry laboratory, a large art room, and a cloakroom, a toilet. So well equipped that I was filled with wonder <coughs> after having experienced the contraptions which then graced the streets of Luton. We were initiated into the mysteries of many new and interesting subjects. We learned of angles and parallel lines, made the acquaintance of the mysterious X, <laughs> were delighted with the truly wonderful results we were soon able to obtain in the chemical laboratory, results as marvellous to our instructor as to ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. 